Hi there, so yes, I am sitting here in my kitchen at the condo because I am currently 27 weeks pregnant and apparently I'm feeling it, you guys. I don't know how I feel about that um, because I'm only 27 weeks pregnant and with my first, I feel like I didn't feel it until like 26 or 27 weeks and then I was like, all right, you can come out anytime now. Um, but I'm 27 weeks and I'm really starting to feel it. So anyways, that's a whole discussion for another day. But today I am here, I am sitting, and I just really feel like I want to share some information with you guys about how the menstrual cycle can impact um, so many of the things that we try to undertake, just activities that we try to do in our day-to-day -day lives. Everything from sex and sex drive to um, our metabolic processes and insulin resistance, um, our appetites, shifts in how well we we may or may not do if we're undertaking a new dietary change um, and, and things of that nature. Even how well you will perform in the gym is impacted by where you are at in your cycle. And this isn't to say that your cycle has to hold you back. It's just that if we are well informed about what's going on on a physiological level, then we can stop beating ourselves up over things that maybe are outside of our control. And by maybe, I mean, Definitely. So this goes from for everybody from, um, you know, people who don't work out and don't do a lot of physical activity all the way through to athletes, right? So these hormonal shifts um, provided you are menstruating are happening for you no matter what your lifestyle and physical activity level is, and they can impact you in, the, in essentially the same ways. So Let's uh, get into it. So when I talk to my patients um, about their cycles, without fail, every single time I ask, I say, how long is your cycle? The response is four days, five days, seven days, whatever. They're talking about their bleed, how long they're bleeding for. I'm sorry that this is maybe direct for people, but that is what they're talking about. Um, they are talking about their actual menstruation. And when I say cycle and in the medical world, your cycle is from day one to the following day one. So day one of your bleed all the way through your menses, then you stop bleeding and then you have three weeks off roughly and then you start again at day one. So it's that length. Um, the typical cycle runs 28 days. A lot of conditions um, will cause you to have uh, lengthened cycles but that's a topic for another video. So assuming a 28 day cycle, the kind of perfect textbook ovulation point is day 14. So that's right bang halfway through in the middle of your cycle. So week one would be days zero or one through seven and then uh, seven to 14 hit ovulation um, and then 14 to 28 is your luteal phase, uh, which is where, and then that leads to menstruation again at day zero, day one. Okay. So the differences in the cycles are what are really key. So the dominant hormone in that follicular phase. So day one through 14, the beginning of your cycle, the first half of your cycle is estrogen. And estrogen gets a really, really bad rap. But what it does do for us is that it, it decreases our appetite and it increases our insulin sensitivity. So if you're shoveling your face with carbs in those first few weeks of your menstrual cycle, that's okay. I mean, it's not great, but your body is going to handle them much more effectively than it will if you are eating a ton of carbs between day 14 and day 28. Now, most of you ladies just thought, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> that is exactly when I eat more carbs is leading up to my menstrual cycle. When I have those PMS symptoms, I am craving carbs. And that is because your metabolic rate actually increases in that second part of your cycle. So day 14 through day 28, your metabolic rate and, and your metabolic needs, sorry, increases by about 100 to 300 calories per day. Most women eat more than that, so they overcompensate, but that's why you're craving those carbs or part of the reason that you're craving those carbs. The unfortunate part is that during that period, your insulin sensitivity also decreases. So 
it's not the best time to be consuming carbs. And it's actually the period that I recommend if people are going to be doing some keto cycling. So uh, you, it's a hot diet right now, um, is eating to cause ketosis. Uh, the smart, the, the best time for your body to do that if you're doing um, it in cycles is actually from day 14 to 28 and then go back to eating your kind of mixed Mediterranean diet and then cycle back into keto for one to two weeks in the latter half of your cycle. Hopefully this is all making sense so far. So in terms of activity, I mentioned sex drive, so we'll go there for a quick minute. Uh, typically we see a spike in testosterone just before ovulation, which happens for a number of reasons, but it makes perfect sense that our sex drive increases right before ovulation because you're ovulating, um, you know, historically, evolutionarily speaking, you're ovulating so that you can get pregnant and make a baby. So your sex drive, you may notice if you start paying attention that uh, day, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14 are like hot days and you're into it. Okay, so that is um, a response to what's going on with your hormonal profile. And um, I'll also say that in terms of activity choices, I recommend that if people are going to start a diet, especially if it is a lower carb diet, um, and I know this kind of goes against what I just said about doing keto in those last two weeks of your cycle, but um, it's very hard to start a diet in those last couple weeks of your cycle because your metabolic rate, and, and I say diet in the typical sense, so if you're talking about doing a calorie deficit diet where you're trying to cut back your calories, it's hard to start in those last two weeks of your cycle because your metabolic need actually increases. And so your body will be asking for more and you're saying, no, 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 today is Monday, today we start the diet, today we eat less, okay? So it's probably not the best idea to embark on a major diet switch uh, for the first time in that second part of your cycle. In terms of uh, metabolic function and working out and that sort of thing, body composition wise, um, we need to make sure that if you're working out and you are taking measurements that you are comparing week one measurements to week one measurements or week two measurements to week two. I would even say, because things do shift really, really quickly for us, uh, that you do them on the same day of your cycle. So start cycle tracking. And if you're embarking on a new diet and workout plan, take those measurements on, let's say, day four of your cycle or day three of your cycle if you do that, don't repeat that measurement until your next cycle on day three or day four, because if you do it every two weeks, for example, you are going to be comparing measurements that are taken in completely different physiological states. So just don't do that to yourself. <laughs> um, that second part of your cycle, you're going to be retaining more water and you're going to be wondering, I haven't made any gains here. What is going on? So um, please compare measurements on day X to day X of, of the following cycle. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to talk to quickly, uh, talk to you guys quickly about is what exercises you're doing at what points in the cycle. So for those first two weeks. So usually, unfortunately, sorry, ladies, looks like menses, you know, for your three to seven days. And then you have another week where you're not menstruating. That's the first half of your cycle. That is where we want to be starting our diet. We want to be, if you're going to embark on a diet, doing more resistance training, pushing a little bit harder in the gym because you can. Your body is uh, has an increased insulin sensitivity. It actually has a decreased response to muscle pain. And so you can do more, you can push more in that phase of your cycle. And then in the last two weeks of your cycle, um, you will actually see that your strength, if you're an avid um, weight trainer, you're gonna see that your strength is gonna decrease in those uh, last two weeks of your cycle. <coughs> Excuse me and uh, your susceptibility to injury is going to increase. So you need to be careful in those last two weeks of your cycle. And then for those of you who are new to weight training, again, that's not 
a good time to run into the gym and lift weights for the first time in 20 years um, because your body is at its weakest and it's most susceptible to injury. So anyways, I'm going to leave it there, but there's a ton of things that we can learn from our menstrual cycles and from learning to move and function in sync with our cycles. And like I said, all of this information is not meant to hold you guys back from doing physical or doing certain activities or embarking on certain uh, adventures in your life. I don't want you to feel trapped by the fact that you have a cycle. Um, It's a beautiful, beautiful thing and we can leverage it. That's all I'm trying to say. We can leverage it when we're picking and choosing what things we want to uh, engage in at what points in our life. And we all need a balance of go, go, go and rest and uh, replenish. So um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.